Okay, welcome back. Um, our next session is um, Zerti and Sakai, or Sakai and Zerti, as it might be listed in the program. Um, and we have a group of presenters from D-Learning. Uh, Inga and Tom um, from D-Learning are actually traveling today, so Tom sent in a recorded portion to talk about the LTI integration. And then we also have Alec and Mustafa from D-Learning that are going to talk to us about AI and, um, and some of the UI uh, changes. So let me just do a brief intro. Um, Alec Nassif is a software and AI developer at D-Learning. He graduated in ICT and software engineering from Fontes University of Applied Sciences, specializing in artificial intelligence. During his studies, he worked on projects in learning analytics, public health, transportation, and environmental monitoring, focusing on data analytics, predictive modeling, and the development of practical software solutions. Alec joined D-Learning as an intern, and he is now um, a Zerti Data. He's now researching how Zerti Data could support advanced learning and predictive analytics. After graduation, he became a full-time developer, where he now leads the AI research for Zerti and actively develops new features and enhancements for the platform. Um, Mustafa Safi, 27 years old, is a formal professional kickboxer turned software developer who blends discipline with technological innovation. Mustafa has worked with Zerti and D-Learning for more than eight years now. And then we also have Tom Rangers. Um, he's he has 35 plus years of experience in designing and programming as a system architect. He has a master's in computer science from the Technical University of Eindhoven. The Netherlands. Uh, he has a lot of experience with different programming languages, and um, he's an expert in SCORM and XAPI. Uh, he started his new next adventure working with, with D-Learning, a company trying to get online learning and analytics to the next level. And one of the steps was adding LTI to Zerti so that it can be used with Sugi and implemented in a lot of different LMSs. So he's one of the core developers in the Zerti community. Um, I am going to go ahead and play the recording first so that you can use the rest of your time kind of um, as needed. So I'll go ahead and play that and, um, and then we can um, have uh, either Alec or Mustafa, whoever would like to go first, uh, take over at that point. Sound good? All right. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Thank you. All right, here we go. So, Xerte and Sakai. Uh, that also means Xerte and LTI, because we are going to try to integrate Xerte, uh, Xerte uh, into Sakai using LTI. So once upon a time, there were two Aperio projects, uh, both uh, with slightly old names, Tsugi and Xerte. Zerti is an online uh, uh, e-learning creation tool that, create, uh, that can create media-rich uh, uh, accessible e-learning modules and that support XAPI and can be harvesting uh, using AOI PMH uh, and also supply SCORM uh, and LTI functionality. Apologies that I couldn't cram in uh, more TLAs in that sentence than this. Tsugi by Dr. Chuck can be used as an LTI library uh, and Zerti needs LTI badly. The beauty of Tsugi is uh, for Zerti was well, not the actual LTI functionality, but the fact that it has an LTI dashboard, an admin dashboard that you can use and which you can use to uh, set up uh, LTI integrations. Uh, in starting from 3.13, uh, the Tsugi admin panel is readily available if you have the rights from the Zerti workspace like this. Zerti, uh, Zerti itself, however, is not really the tool we wanted to integrate. Uh, it was the learning objects them, uh, uh, that uh, are created with Zerti. And so, although things were working, they were kind of quirky, to say the least, in the previous versions. What you had to do uh, was select a learning object that you wanted to place into uh, Sakai. Uh, you went to the properties panel uh, of that uh, module. 
uh, and uh, from there you go to the LTI X API tab and you could enable uh, LTI functionality for this specific project. Uh, if an LRS was available or is available, you can also indicate whether you want to enable XAPI or not. And once you have updated uh, the, the details, you will end up with a launch URL at the bottom. You can use that launch URL or you, you, you had to use that launch URL previously. Uh, go back to Sakai and ha have a custom LTI tool where you had the ability to change the, the, the launch URL. So it was a, a lot of back and forth uh, for an author to put in um, a learning object into Sakai. Uh, what, and, and not only was it cumbersome for um, a lot of L uh, LMSs such as Sakai, uh, but some LMSs even wouldn't allow you to uh, choose and change uh, the launch URL. So I uh, contacted uh, uh, Dr. Chuck uh, and uh, together uh, uh, with him, he, he was kindly enough to build in some hooks into Tsugi that lets us insert published learning objects uh, in the deep link store of Tsugi. So uh, using uh, Azure, you can use that hook function uh, to present uh, the published LTI objects to Tsugi and Tsugi lets you then uh, uh, select those learning objects to put them into um, Sakai. So uh, that's what we did here, but let me demonstrate that. I will put in a new one. Uh, this Sakai installation with the kind help of Wilma Hodges was in, uh, integrated in our Azurti install in the Netherlands. Uh, you press um, the add content button, you go to the add learning app and all LTI 1.3 integrations are shown here. Azurti uh, LTI 1.3 1 is one of them. Now the hook functionality is active. It will show us all the LTI projects in this Xerti installation that have been published as LTI tools. Let me pick one. For example, this one, XAPI and LTI in explanation. Uh, I can press install, submit. And, well, it happens to be the same one as we uh, entered as a test. And I can press the button. Oh, yeah. And it will start the learning object within the context of Sakai. So, at the moment, it's a lot easier to integrate 30 in Sakai. Thank you. All right, that was it from Tom. Um, I will share my screen now, and in the meanwhile, I've sent a link to the presentation uh, we'll be using just in case somebody wants to follow along or to view things in more details later. Um, yeah, uh, please excuse me. I'll be staring at my uh, presentation screen so I can't look at the camera directly. And Let's start. So Xerti and Sakai, we already saw from Tom that the integration has been made significantly easier and now we can take Xerti projects and yeah, add them, import them uh, much more smoothly without quirks, without going through a bunch of hoops to do so. But uh, that begs the question, you know, what is Xerti, which is one of the things that uh, we'll talk about today. i give a few examples then go into some of the new AI and uh, UI updates. Uh, to start with is the introduction, but Wilma already did a wonderful introduction for us, so I think there's no need to uh, dwell on this. But quickly again, uh, so it comes from us, I'm Alec, and I'm here with my colleague Mustafa. And we'll be going over today's contents. Um, right, so since we already did the LTI, we can go on to the kind of Xerti examples. 
Uh, my first question is, I guess, to the audience, and if you'd like to, please respond in the chat. But uh, has anyone heard of Xerti? Are people here familiar with Xerti? Because then I know how detailed I should go with uh, explain, explaining, I guess. I'll give it a moment. All right, that's one yes. So I'm going to assume. All right, yes. All right, so everyone's at least a little bit familiar. Then I'm going to show a bit more brief demo and focus on the fun things. So uh, thank you for your answers, by the way. Um, Xerti is an authoring tool uh, meant to develop interactive, media-rich, and also, mo most importantly, accessible teaching materials. And it is e-learning platform independent, so it can be used with Sakai. Um, let's see, there's a bunch of things that can be done, uh, several kinds of interactive elements, media pages, and so on. And I know this presentation will be available on the link later if you'd like to look into that in more detail. But for now, I think it's best if we show some examples directly. Uh, to start with, I'll do a very sort of basic learning object that's kind of test focused, has a lot of quizzes, draw or false answers, that sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, please excuse that it's all in Dutch, but I think you'll get the gist of it. Uh, yeah, so there's several different ways to present information. You can do media, hotspot pages, links, and so on. Um, one thing that uh, is super interesting is the ability to add a quiz that appears at a certain point in a video, for example, with uh, adequate feedback. Other things include uh, true or false questions, open word answers, and the works I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, more fun things, and I think a very creative use of what Zerti has to offer is, for example, the uh, 360 image page, and that kind of looks like this. This is just one example. Uh, this kind of image page allows you to look around and walk around, similar to how you would in Google Maps, as well as uh, include several interactive elements. So what we could do is move over here. We could read what's on this uh, little plaque, uh, go back, and then uh, to make it a little bit more gamey and a little bit more incentivized to explore. Uh, what you can do is also watch a video and then also interact with locked objects, so things you would need to unlock. And in this one, I happen to know that the answer is King John, which would then open up the castle and let you go in and then back out again. Uh, the reason I focused on this interactive element here is because it also allows for creation of virtual escape rooms. Um, this is a similar example to that, uh, except it is a static image, a compromise of multiple ones, and you can interact with different elements here. So we can see what's on the computer, we can see what's on the ground, turn the light switch on and off, and so on as well as uh, so there's this little nook here that goes into the hallway. We could follow that along to find a stack of books and look for important text here, then come back and try to find where the exit is. Um, let's see. So we've seen the typical forums, the 360 images, and uh, an escape game-like interactivity. Uh, another thing is, for example, the bootstrap uh, is what we call it. It is a sort of long form kind of object that's different from normal learning objects that's much more suitable for presenting larger information flows, so blog updates, news, uh, things like this. And it's in a sort of scroll mobile friendly manner. And uh, there's uh, honestly much more examples if you're interested. Uh, Please, I uh, encourage you to check it out in the presentation. You can simply go through them and click and have a look for yourself. Um, let's see. We already went through the video. All right. 
So Tom showed us how to integrate Xerti with Sakai easier, but you know that wasn't the only thing that was clunky, and we have some UI updates that Mustafa will share and has worked very hard on. So I'm going to give up my screen and uh, let you go ahead, or shall I? You can right. still keep sharing until I have to demonstrate. Well, All good right. afternoon or good night for the most of you. Um, today I'll be talking about the user interface and the user experience and why they are so critical to our success. Uh, before I start talking about the uh, importance of UI UX, I would like to ask you to give me your honest opinion, and you could be bold, um, about the UI on the right side of the screen. You can put it into the chat. I can give it a second. Yes, so we also thought the same, and that's why we had to put more attention to it. Um, first, for the ones that don't know what UI UX means, UI uh, stands for the design and the layout of the system, while the UX is the overall experience of the user. Um, a well UI UX can improve user satisfaction, increase engagement, and ultimately boost productivity. Uh, poor design can lead to frustration, errors, and a loss of trust. Uh, think about an application or a mobile app um, that you have abandoned because it was too confusing to navigate, and that will be the cost of a poor UI and the UX. Um, uh, for the progress, we have submitted a funding request to Unpulse, which is a government program. Uh, together with them, we have recently did a research uh, for beginner users of Xerti. And um, there were plenty of uh, feedback, but also uh, some useful improvement ideas. Uh, we have re-implemented these ideas into our wireframe, and I will show them in the next slides. Um, can you please continue to the next slide, Alec? Thank you. So on the left side, on this one is the new one, and that's the previous design. Can I have um, some messages of what you guys think about the new design? Thank you very much. Um, so um, most of the work um, that has been done on the UI UX was made by me, and I am totally not a UI UX designer. So uh, together with Ampos, we have hired someone who actually is a professional UI UX designer, and um, he will go ahead and um, look if he can refine and enhance our newest design, and it could be like something totally different or maybe even the same. So we have to wait for that. And um, for the next one, Alec, we also have an editor. How you uh, make those? Um, how you make those um, escape rooms and all the other stuff Alec showed? Um, well, we had some feedback that PowerPoint is a more natural way. So we thought, okay, we could uh, see if we can make it something like that. And then we gave it our own twist. Um, and this is what it looked like. I think, personally, this is way more uh, easier to use than the one before. And uh, right now, um, I will take over the screen to give you guys an overview of what we have made until now. And uh, for the people who are looking at the presentation again, you can click on the image on the right side, and that will take you to our wireframe where you can um, step into and um, click on some things, and then you will get newer windows. And that's what I will show you right now. If I can take 
the screen. Thank you. There we go. So this is what's the first page. So uh, we uh, will start Zerti for the new users with a, a kind of a walkthrough. So first we give some information what Zerti is and maybe a video about how to use it that new um, users can watch and uh, get a more um, easier feeling when they use the system. So if I finish that one, first you get two assignments. First will be to create a um, module. So I will click on the first task. It will tell me to click at the top, the plus button. Then I will type a name. I will do the plus button again, and then I have done the first step. The second step is to open the editor where all the magic happens. So I will click on the second one. It will tell me to click on the demo and then on the edit. And then you get the editor. So um, as you can see, we have quite some changes. And I would like to show you some of the changes. Uh, first one is that we can, oh, I have to finish this one first. Perfect. Um, and if you share your projects with other people inside of the company, then you can have them all in a row. If they don't have an image, you will see their first and last name as an image with the roles underneath and the names above. Um, I think that makes it a bit better to see who is in that specific module. Well, uh, besides that, we also made a, a wizard. This was the first wizard that we made. It didn't stand out that much. We had a lot of imp to improve, but um, that's why we do this. This, and if you go to the second one, and this is what we eventually wanting to build. If it's if if I could choose the shots, um, some feedback was about the right button click because uh, we don't do a lot of stuff with it, and I tried to re-implement to implement that into the current design. So if I press on the bullet page, I will get the bullet page. And with the right click, I could duplicate or delete it. So I can delete it. And that's to give you a bit of a feeling of how it should work. Uh, besides that, we have created a, a dark mode for the people who don't like to get flashbanged because I like to work in a darker room. Uh, it's the switch on the right top that will make it easier on the eyes for people like me who like to work while it's dark in the room. Well, um, if you don't like the current um, current uh, design or the current UI UX, and you're more more used to the previous one, you could easily go to your profile and change the theme back to Zerti, and then you will just have your Zerti UI UX back. Well, I think I've showed most of the things. Uh, for the people who like to go through this, there are some other buttons. If you press on an empty space, then you see everything that lights up is something clickable. So I would say have fun. And if there is any um, feedback, please let us know. And I think that was it for my part. Thank you very much, Alec. All right. Thank you for sharing and indeed something to really look forward to. Uh, as a reminder, if you want to go through that, am I uh, not muted? All right. Um, as a reminder, if you would like to go through this yourself, you can just click on the image in the presentation. But in terms of uh, new features, time saving and just convenience, we also have some changes regarding or changes, new developments, I, would, I should say, regarding the AI research. Um, First, I'll start off with a quick question, and as I'm going through things, you can answer in chat. If there is AI support for any of your authoring tools, whichever one you prefer, um, what would you, just off the top of your head, what would you most like for that authoring or for that AI to do? So it can be generative, it can be assisting with something, but if you have any ideas, I'd love to see them in the chat. And uh, the reason I'm asking is because we've done a fair bit of research with key Xerti users and have noticed some common themes. So I'm curious for comparison's sake. Let's see. And uh, just as a little mini agenda, we've created some mockups uh, 
four potential AI implementation based on our research on the capabilities of commercial models, of local models, and so on and so forth, and made a list of things we think might be possible. And I'll get to that in a moment. All right, uh, I see quiz questions. It's uh, definitely one thing, quiz questions, word puzzles, uh, just text in general. Uh, it's all things that have been mentioned and that can cause a lot of time to be wasted when you're the one doing it. Um, so actually, let me go to that example right away. Uh, one thing we thought of was Many people like to make uh, interactive content, but it is time consuming. So what would be the easiest way to do that? Well, we thought maybe if you upload your PowerPoint, your slides, um, a text document, Word document, PDF, and so forth, you should be able to create something from that directly. And this is a video example showing how that could look. Um, all right, I'm getting a bit of lag, unfortunately. Not certain why that is. Might have something to do with the screen sharing. Uh, can you still hear me? Yes, we're still hearing you. All right. So I guess we'll have to be a little bit patient with the video. Um, I'll explain over what was just skipped, just in case it lags again. Essentially, you would be entering a optional property and there you specify, okay, I want this subject, which is present in the uploaded PDF. Um, and then there's some, huh. Now that's strange, we host these videos ourselves. So unless the server has fallen, I'm not sure why it's so slow. Um, well, I can get the idea across at least. Uh, so doing this, you'd specify things like tone and style, what reading level it should be, the general difficulty, and how many questions would you like, how many answers should those questions have. And then you end up with a learning object that has several of these uh, questions with custom feedback for every correct and wrong answer that can really enlighten the student and let them know where they went wrong or what it all means without forcing the teacher to go through the tedium of writing out feedback for every possible uh, poor answer. Let's see if the other videos fare better. Uh, another thing we thought of is to do this for videos. So the idea is that you would provide a video as input and from that generate uh, questions or little uh, time uh, start and end cards, fun facts that will be synced at exactly the correct point in the video. And uh, thankfully, this one is working. Oh, I spoke too soon, it seems. Um, now, I'm not sure what the issue is. It could also be my internet. I apologize. There is some work being done. Right. Um, okay, so the entering process is similar to what we just saw, and this is the result. It is a big block of text at the moment, but uh, I'm also in Dutch. My apologies. But if we could just get it a bit further so it can get to the quiz. Hmm. Regretfully not possible. Um, okay, I'll just go over to the last example and try and let that load before continuing. Uh, so what we've done in the previous two is create uh, quizzes essentially from different kinds of content, both textual content and video content. And this is something else that key users have expressed uh, is a large time sink, which is searching for images that have a adequate free license. So uh, the adequate free license in this case means royalty-free images from websites that generally support that kind of thing. And trying to find the correct image where each website has its own uh, searching parameters and then each website has different, slightly different licenses that you have to navigate has been quite a challenge for many. And we thought, what if 
we could create an AI tool that would take a query, a description, and from that extrapolate the necessary parameters for the website and return images that specify your licensing requirements so that you get essentially just a gallery of images that fit your needs to choose from. And if the video plays and it's not playing. I can also show it, Alec. It does work on mine. All right. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Yes, no worries. Yes. It would be the last one, right? Yes. Perfect. All right. Yeah, so here we search for an electric car and immediately get the results. We pick one and it can be integrated seamlessly and edited further into the video. And uh, Mustafa, if you'd like to show the quiz and interactive uh, video as well, it should not take more than one minute. Definitely. So the quiz. Yes. All right. Yes. So this is the editor that we saw before, still the old version, but good enough for demonstration purposes. We specify how much, how many questions and answers we'd like, upload the file, and then with the click of a button, it can be generated. And of course, all of these answers are based on tests we've done with actual uh, generative models. So we know it's possible to do so. Here we see that every question, whether right or wrong, has its own detailed feedback. And any further edits and customizations are, of course, possible. And yes the interactive video now. And just very briefly, interactive video as well. So either uploading the video or uh, providing a link should work. It already can work with our infrastructure. We just have to implement the AI part. And yes, now looking at the video preview, we'll see that each of the questions and title cards is synced to the correct point in time. Yes. All right, that should be sufficient. And then we have a couple of minutes left for questions. Uh, apologies for the little technical issue on my side. All right. No worries, we all have glitches, so we can definitely relate. <laughs> so does anybody have questions uh, for Alec or Mustafa about Xerti? Or using Xerti with Sakai? Yes, and if uh, questions come later, you can always email us at info at dlearning.nl, and we'll be happy to help you or answer or schedule a further session. Great. Well, thank you both so much for um, for presenting and showing us some sneak peeks of the new UI. That's very exciting because that was one piece of feedback that we got consistently from folks is that the UI could use an update and the mockups that you showed look really snazzy. So I'm excited to see that actually um, implemented and um, the, uh, the new LTI um, ad app option is is much more user friendly in Sakai. So it'll be a lot easier to plug those in. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for sharing that. Well, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, <laughs> great. And from Indeed. joining all the way from the Netherlands, I, we appreciate your uh, staying up late. So, um, <laughs> no problem. It's great. good to be here. <laughs> Well, we are just on the mark for our, the end of uh, this session. Our next session at 2 p.m. is from uh, Adia King at Pepperdine. She's going to talk to us about their on onboarding for new adjunct faculty. So um, those of you who are in a faculty support role will probably find this very fascinating. So we'll see you back in about 10 minutes. Again, same room. Um, so I will go on mute until then, but please join us at 2. <laughs>